Happy Super Bowl hangover Monday, everybody. Woo! Hope that cup of coffee's tasting sweet and you're rethinking your life choices that you made yesterday. I'm dragging a little bit. Morning, Morning Craig. He's chipper today. Hi. Well, yeah, they're not drinking sweet coffee if they're doing the 10-day challenge. Is he wearing a Patriot shirt? Is that what that, that was all about? Yes. Oh, my gosh. Congrats on your sixth Super Bowl, pal. I'm sure this one tastes really sweet. Tom Brady, the winningest football player of all time. He's got six rings now. Boom. Oldest quarterback ever to do it, Bill Belichick, the oldest coach ever to do it. The Patriots win in a snoozer, 13-3 yesterday over the Rams. What would you think about the game? It's the topic of our talking question today. Get in the comment section and say hello. Let us know what you thought about the performance. I'm Paul, that's Vanessa and Jimmy. Uh, your thoughts, guys. Wait, for, besides it has to do with the game, but did what? you see Wait, the hold picture? On. <laughs> what? <laughs> it has to do with the game, but it's not the actual game. Did you see the picture of the side-by-side 10 years difference? From yeah, the 10-year challenge. They, yeah, they did a couple side-by-side yeah, pictures that was, like that. He looks completely Who different. Who are you talking about? Um, Brady. Brady. Oh. Completely different. Yeah, he's like 40-something now. He looks better now than he did back then. Like, I, would his wife, Giselle, like, is that when they met? When did they meet? Because he looks oh. completely... I don't think it's Giselle's fault. I think it's his, like, crazy personal trainer, that Alex Guerrero guy, <laughs> the one that got banned from the Patriots facility because he's into a bunch of weird stuff. Oh. Anyways, I don't think he was as handsome back then. He just oh, you think he's more handsome yes. now? Yes, yeah, that was my point. Oh, I was going to say Father Time was undefeated. I'm no, sorry. No, he looks slipping. better now. See, sometimes, Vanessa, then. you can't judge a book by its cover. Yeah. A man will evolve. Look at all the men you've given <laughs> up. They probably look like Tom Brady right now. <laughs> How many crazy. Tom Brady's did you quit on? Mm hmm. We're not talking about this. Okay, They're so all back wondering the where you are. <laughs> You're asking about Giselle. They're like, where did Vanessa go? <laughs> Anyways, that was my thought on it. When I saw that picture, I was like, wow, like, he's changed and for the better. Football's dying. <laughs> oh, dying. Okay. All right, lay it on us. Oh, gosh. You said it's, the same thing about baseball. Give not, it to me. They're not allowed to hit the way they used to, which is good. I'm glad they're okay, but it's not quite as exciting anymore. Uh, I think the peak of football were the 90s and probably through about 2009, and then things started to go down. Uh, they got cocky. Uh, they, start, they just they didn't change enough. Uh, Goodell moves teams all over the country. Chargers leave. Uh, Raiders should not be leaving Oakland. I, I, I just think in general, it, it, and the, the numbers don't lie. We're going to find out what those stats are. That was a terrible game yesterday. And then the game last year was extremely exciting. Probably in the one, other direction. Probably one of yeah. the best games ever. Still one of the lowest rated in modern history. So uh, people are just, they're losing their taste for football. Let me, let me float something your way. Mm -hmm. Is it too commercialized? Like, and, I, and forget about the Super Bowl on its own, because mm -hmm. the Super Bowl is a commercial event. Football in general, is it too much big business now? Is the NFL gotten to the point where they have to put business interests in front of the actual entertainment value that the sport one pro once provided? The CTE lawsuit is, is an example of that. The rule changes to goose scoring and change the way the game is played. The relocation of franchises plays into the whole money machine. The decisions they make as a big business, whether it's the national anthem controversy or development for new technologies, like those are all decisions based upon big business and money. The, the replay reviews, for Christ's sake. I mean, that's all we've been talking about since the championship games. Yeah. I, I wonder I, if they've aired too much on that side of caution. Uh, I, I don't know. Just the whole ch thing's changed. Even the commercials are not funny anymore. Yeah. But, but we'll stick to the game right now. I, I just don't think the game is what it used to be. And, and, and I'm not saying that's a sad thing. You're, we're protecting players. But it would be like changing boxing. Okay? We love to boxing. If you like it, you want to see people hit. And when all, all of a sudden they said you can't hit them in the head. You've got to wear these big head protectors now. You know, I don't know. I just, it's just not what it used to be. It's not as exciting. They've made some bad changes. I think in 20, 25 years, you're going to see uh, soccer, foot, um, football, the other football take over. The other football take over in this country. Don't just listen to us blowhards uh, talk. Yeah, what do you think? Yeah, Seriously. Know what you think. Yeah. No, I mean, a lot of people are Marcy talking. says, who cares? It was an awful game. Ashanti yeah. was asking who won. So if you really uh -oh. didn't watch, good for you. Look, so that, our question to them was, should the Super Bowl be played on Saturday? Yeah, and Danny seems to think it should be. A lot of people said yes, that they agree. Um, someone said, leave it the way it is. It's called Super Bowl Sunday for a reason. Yes, Saturday would be best for all. That was from Teresa. Um, some people said yes. Al said yes. Karina said yes. Danny wants Saturday uh, so you can have more recovery time from the partying. This is actually our ICYMI, or in case you missed it on Today in AZ. Jimmy Q floated this idea out there. Give him a listen and let us know what you think. There was quite the push a couple years ago to make the Monday after Super Bowl a holiday. How about this? Super Bowl Saturday. Yep, I said that. 
Jimmy's been saying it for years. It's actually his platform in 20. I don't know. Exactly. It doesn't. It doesn't have the the night the same ring to it. Super Bowl Saturday. But you really think that we can move that big of a game to Saturday? Huge, absolutely. All you do is would, change the date on the calendar. No, yeah. I don't think it would work. Wow. Ratings wise, because I feel like people always look to Sunday as the big football game. So to move it to Saturday just wouldn't really make sense. It wouldn't compute. And you know that the NFL would never do anything to mess with numbers and viewership. No, no, not at all. Like moving the Chargers to Los Angeles. Right. Like moving the Rams to Los, Los Angeles. Angeles. Like moving the Raiders to Vegas. Silver lining, the Chick-fil-A no. inside Atlanta Stadium would be open on Super Bowl Saturday. Speaking Have of, you convinced now? No? Speaking of the Chargers, though, did you see... Um, Uh-oh, what? Quarterback of the Chargers. Philip Rivers? Yeah, his yeah. apology to San Diegans. Oh, really? Yeah, I'll, I'll text it to you. I want to see it. Yeah, that's good. Still angry. They're, they're, they, they don't exist anymore. There are no more San Diego. You're dead to me. Done. They're dead to me. I was waiting for you to say that. Yeah, <laughs> seriously. Uh, yeah, too many changes. I think they've messed up big time. And, and we're going to start to feel the repercussions more and more. Here's another thing to look for. As soon as L.A. or San Diego, those two teams, get a, just average, just a little lackluster, no one's going to go. Go to those games. Well, San Diego doesn't have a team anymore. Well, I'm you talking about LA. The Ram, the two, I, I know two Southern LA California teams. folk. Yeah. I live there. I've been with them. I well, lived amongst them. We they don't had go attendance to games. issues this year, and they were one of the best teams in the NFL. Wait till they drop a little bit. Well, they're building that new stadium. They're hoping that people will put their butts in those seats. In Inglewood. Yeah. You ever been to Inglewood? I haven't. You know how to handle yourself? <laughs> <laughs> so you're living in Hermosa uh, Beach, uh -huh. chilling? With the honeys, having a blast? Right. The you're, gonna get, yeah. you're gonna get in your car and drive? All the way into Inglewood, which we're anywhere in LA, there's traffic issues everywhere yeah. you go. Um, but I don't know. I, I don't think it's going to work. It didn't work before when they brought the Raiders down. People don't go watch football games in LA. Well, let me, let me just posit this Do you want to watch football games in person? Period. Like I, I ask you, the viewers, this morning, it, the, with the way technology has advanced and the 70 inch TVs that are in most of our living rooms, why would I go to the game? Exactly. Like yeah. the, the broadcast is so good now and like the commentary can be so enriching and you can get it in closed captioning in different languages. You can have like, especially for the big games, you can watch telecasts that are like running parallel to the actual broadcast. Like I could have a different set of commentators doing the game. I could be watching just the sideline cameras. Yeah. I could be watching the overhead, all 22s. Like the options are all there. If you're in person, all you're doing is spending a ton of money and stressing yourself out to park and paying an astronomical amount of money to get a worse product than you could get in your own yeah, living room. It's loud. It's I mean, a lot of people say too that they like to be at home to watch it because they yeah. can hear everything. Yes. It's what's actually going on. Like if you're at the game, you miss so many things yes. because of everyone around you. And you they know? can't replay it. You're always yeah. looking up at the screen. What happened? What happened? Let's see if they play it again. Yeah. And, and at home, you're right. They, they replay it 20 different times. So th that's a good point. Plus, we do. We get our scores. We get everything from here. Kathy said the Super Bowl was very boring and the commercials were completely lame. Total oh, disappointment. Man. Tired of the Patriots. <laughs> you know, one thing I'm not disappointed in this morning, what? and we could talk more about the game and the commercials, but one thing that made me really happy about the Patriots winning not the result, but the fact that it proved one of the friends of uh, this show right oh, once again. Yes. Fernando the Sloth, <laughs> chilling in his enclosure in the Phoenix Zoo this morning, probably not watching the after show because he doesn't know how to use Facebook. You may recall this video from two years ago when he correctly picked the Eagles over the Patriots in the last Super Bowl. He was given a similar option Look this him. time. Rams, Patriots, hey, look at him deliberate. He's see. thinking about this. Yeah. He's like, oh. And he goes with the Pats this year which I thought was a risky move considering he went against the dynasty last year and once again it paid off for him. Fernando the Sloth, undefeated Super Bowl picker. He's like, I really just want that rose. That's all I want. There were more delicious flowers inside the Patriots uh, jug this year. I mean, like, we have to bring him back next year now. He's becoming a Super Bowl staple, Fernando the Sloth. I like him, and he's pretty clear, too. Yeah, I mean, it takes a while to figure out what he's going to do, but, you know. <laughs> a slow, methodical decision. Uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. Oh, Back to our question. I like this here. So Hit if me. you should move it on Saturday instead of Sunday. Yeah. Well, Kay said, I don't mind Sunday. Just start it earlier. Yeah, but you got to think. Okay. It's, it's an Eastern time zone thing. So even in the Eastern time zone, they started that game pretty early, like 6-something. A lot of sporting events start like 7 or 7.30 yeah. local time. So they they like, want to hit that prime time. Yeah. Big time. It's a lot of money there. But that would help. I mean, the reason, and I don't, I don't think any of us are necessarily pushing it for it to be moved to Saturdays, but it just gives you a little extra time. They said 17 million people are calling into work today. Wow. The day after the Super Bowl. That's crazy. I mean, that's a lot. Oh, back in the day, I remember the, the party just got started after this, the game ended. Yeah. Yeah. And then you know it was a good party 
if after you left after the party, after the Super Bowl, and you're asking people, who won again? Mm, yeah, when what you're hanging happened? out at stage three. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> the party after the party, stage three. Huh? I kept it low key and just watched it at a restaurant. <clears throat> Really? Yeah. Any screaming? Any yelling? Yeah. Well, I told you during the halftime performance earlier, I said um, when Adam Levine took off his shirt, <laughs> all the ladies are like, yeah. I'm asking her about the game. She's like, yeah, when Adam Levine took his shirt off, we all screamed. I watched the end, the second half of the game at home, and yeah, it was just like, what am I doing? Why am I sitting here watching this? It was really boring. I stuck with it out of a yeah. sense of obligation, one, to my colleagues here on this program, because I wanted to talk about it educa in an educated fashion this morning. Right. But two, like... It's the Super Bowl. And so you just, I think you go in with a feeling that something exciting is going to happen eventually, right? Mm -hmm. And then it just kind of never did. It was just a clunker all the way around. I felt the same way about the commercials in the halftime show. Oh, like, yeah. I thought that they all matched very well because it was all just a little, eh. A lot of promoting TV shows and other movies coming up. Yeah. I was like, oh, it sucks. A, a beer commercial promoting Game of Thrones. That was actually one of the better commercials. I thought I, I liked the uh, the Bud Light Game of Thrones mashup because it was unexpected. It was weird. Threw everybody off. Yeah. I liked the football one that we were talking about that had like Emmett Smith, Larry Fitzgerald. Oh, the NFL 100 one. That I was love that because like you didn't yeah. expect that at first, right? When the football rolls off the cake. And then all of a sudden, everybody's like, uh-oh. <laughs> Everyone's talking trash about this Pepsi ad, apparently. We had it on the show this morning. People said it made them want a Coke. Ooh. It made me want a Pepsi. But it was yes. nice to see the dude. Me and producer Jeff can agree with that. We saw a brief little glimpse of it there. It was for a Stella Artois commercial. Uh, I believe the dude, uh, Jeff, Jeff Bridges. Yeah. This is a good one. Oh, what, which Bublé. one was this one? You pronounced it Stella Artois. Oh, that was Michael uh, Bublé. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, because the, the drink was like bubbly, and he was calling it bubbly. <laughs> and they're like, no, it's bubbly. And like, so he went back and said, no, it's bubbly. <laughs> and then it was just like back and forth. It was cute. Uh, I didn't get the uh, Doritos commercial. You remember the Doritos spot? That one with Chance the Rapper in the back. Yeah, just voice? dudes like dancing in front of like rainbow colored private jets. Like that doesn't really appeal to what target demographic are they shooting for there? Mm -hmm. I don't own a one, jet. I don't know. Oh, oh I did like the football one. The fumble. That was just yeah, kind of cute. Welcome to the conversation. Oh, sorry. About that. <laughs> that, one, that one I like. No, because I was I trying to think of what's this time instead of me. <laughs> Thank you, Jimmy. We're all running slow today. I know. We really are. I know. Yeah, I, just, you know, I was telling you during my traffic to go, I don't even know what I was saying. Like, my brain is shutting down because I'm tired. And I was like, guys, I don't even know what I just said. It's called a morning show. Yeah. It's called waking up. In the There's just not a lot of controversy anymore. Everyone's too scared to do stuff. That's yeah. the point. That You're dead on you know? there. Is that there was nothing exciting in those ads. I'm trying to think of one. Um, remember the one where the guy, he had a blind date. It's a Bud Light commercial, I think. He's got a... No, no, he's meeting the mom for the first time. He's talking to his best mm -hmm. friend on the phone. He says, well, you better get a, look at her, a good look at her mom because that's what she's going to look like. And he's like, what, what? And all of a sudden the door knocks and they're there and he looks through the peephole and he sees his, his fiance and her mom and her mom is beautiful. Mm -hmm. And he opens up the door and then her mom has this gigantic pair of pants <laughs> that she's filling out. <laughs> and, then, and then he's like in shock and he keeps hearing because that's what she's going to look like. like. <laughs> and next thing you know, they're on the table and, and the, the skinny one is just eating. It's like, isn't my mom great? Oh my gosh. Awful. I like this. Um, where did he go? I missed. Raul said yes because a lot of adults consume alcohol on Super Bowl Sunday yeah. and hungover on Monday. So yeah, it should be on Saturday. So he agrees with it. I, like I didn't drink. I like where Shabazz is at. Is that get rid of the Pats in the Super Bowl could be great again. Yeah. That dynasty's got to die eventually, yeah. right? It is. It is. Like, oh, it's this I again. thought last year was the end. Yeah. Man, it's yeah. not. It's never. It never is. You know what's crazy? Is what I heard a lot of uh, sports people this morning is that Belichick does so much with. If anything, kind of average players. Uh, there's a lot of Hall of Famers, but really, yeah. he does. That's that is a, a major ability. While these other teams, the Rams had all these all stars and people signed for tons of money. Belichick can keep going if he if he's got this formula. He, you're 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 so right, and he's he's such an excellent coach. Like I think sometimes we look at professional athletes and we think like, what do they need coaches for? These are some of the most physically gifted humans on the planet. Mm -hmm. Why do they need a cranky old white guy telling them what to do? Huh? But Belichick and his scheme is so, like, fail-safe. I mean, look at what they lost this year. I don't want to get two X's and O's for the people that don't care much about football. But the Patriots lost Danny Amendola in free agency. Mm -hmm. They lost a star corner. They lost a wide receiver in Brandon Cooks. They, they had a huge turnover this offseason. They started the year by having Julian Edelman, the eventual MVP, suspended for four games for PED juice or uh, uh, use. They had Josh Gordon, the wide receiver they picked up from the Browns, suspended for the entire year. Yeah. Like, th th this whole team was like... 
kind of a mess. Like yep. Rob Gronkowski dealing with injuries again. This should be a rebuilding year. The defensive side of the ball was not strong all year long. And then they come in and they hold the highest scoring team in the NFL to three points in the Super Bowl and win again. Like That's, that's coaching. That's the freaking Patriot way, man. Yep. They're not out of options either. They, have, they still have money. These other teams, they spend all their money, and then they get no picks, and they're out of options, and then they go back, and the Sounds Patriots like have tons of options. <laughs> <laughs> What's that about? Got her! <laughs> oh, yes! Oh. What, what's next? What do we got going on next year? Do we have fresh squeezed juice in the show anywhere, Producer Jeff? We do. Can we, can we get that? Let's do, let's do some fresh squeezed juice. We haven't done this segment in a while because mm. we've been out at the Phoenix Open, and there's no teleprompter out there, so we can't read about anything. There's no teleprompter here either. <laughs> I don't see it. Let's just make it up without okay. having a script. You want okay, to try that? Okay, what is this? Oh, it's the... Uh, it's the Puppy Bowl! Commercial. The Animal oh. Planet staple every single year. They, it's like counter-programming against uh, what the Super Bowl is doing. Oh, how cute. They have a bunch of puppies get together. Yeah. It's good times. Ooh. And did, uh, did a certain Puppy Bowl... What were their, what were their names? Oh, I don't know. Prob- they probably have cute names. Yeah, they're, they're all named like people, but, but with uh, their dogs. These are some Pupper. of the dogs you're looking for, Paul. Oh, they had, they a, had sloth a sloth as a referee, referee this year, says producer Jeff. Team Ruff won the game. Oh, thank goodness. I had money on Team Who Ruff. Who did they beat? What was the Who other team's team name? Come on. <laughs> Jeff Sabato. I wish we could take his He's microphone out right now. We need to figure out a way to do that. His answer, who won the game. <laughs> We're just going to show you cute know. puppies and kittens. That's all. Just play us That out. makes everybody's Our producer, Monday. Jeff Sabato, looks up to me like, I don't know. Like Lee Kent says, watch. grow up and ask a question that matters. Hey, Lee, you grow up and watch a different show. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it is Facebook. Works. You can Man, switch off. <laughs> you just click the X and you're done with us. You didn't have to leave a mean comment at all. I mean, everyone is fine. I feel like we have to explain this every time we do the show. Yeah, this is a light show. This is fun, light topics that are just. Going on at the time, right? It's big Super Bowl, the day after Super Bowl. So everybody's talking about this. We're not talking about hard hitting. Let's let's games. get to the let's get to halftime for just a second. Okay. Um, I, one of the things that I noticed immediately after the Maroon Five performance was the outrage on the internet about how Adam Levine is allowed to take <laughs> his shirt off and and show yeah. his goods, but Janet Jackson flashed uh, half of a nipple a few years ago and it sabotaged her career. Yes. Like tarnished her good name because of a uh, little and it was stunt an at the end of the Super Bowl. Um, well, well supposedly, supposedly, but yeah. Whatever. So even with this though, I saw a lot of people posting that his performance was so bad that he didn't know what to do, so that's why he took his shirt off. off. (laughs) I'm panicking. Time to take my shirt off. He's like, this is going to save me. They said if he had to perform another two minutes, he would have been in his box. (laughs) Yeah. I don't know. It wasn't, yeah, I mean, it wasn't that exciting. Um, Who did it last year? Lady Gaga? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And remember Um, she started it by like, Faking like she was jumping into the stadium from the roof. They had that like weird like CG shot yes. of her, like, plunging from the top of the uh-huh. building. And this was neat too. The lights that they had, all the lights. I had no qualms about the performance. In fact, I thought the drone show and all the cool stuff they did with like the lanterns was very cool. Yeah, I thought the performance itself, like the way it was uh, constructed and produced, was awesome. I just thought Maroon Five sucked. Like, I thought that Adam Levine, like, was out of breath the whole time right. from, like, running around, which I get it. It's a stage show. There's, there's a lot five. of moving pieces. Yeah. He had wardrobe changes and stuff. Um, but but when, you, when you're out of breath, you can't sing. And Adam Levine is such a talented singer that, like, when I heard him singing these Maroon 5 classics, they just sounded bad, you know? He should have did the whole lip syncing thing. You know this. who turned it down this year? It was Adele. Really? Adele, yeah. Yeah, they, they offered it to her. She says, look, this isn't, it's not my audience. Uh, she's got some pipes. Yeah. Uh, and big boy. <laughs> big boy. He, um, him and his jacket, he got a lot of uh, stuff for that. They're like, we hope it's fake. It's not a real one. People tweeting about that. People are also debating in the comment section as to whether or not the Patriots cheat. Um, they do cheat Ooh. in some ways. Um, I mean, they did get in trouble for the whole Spygate thing, which I believe was the largest fine ever levied in the history of the NFL. Really? Uh, and then Julian Edelman was on performance-enhancing drugs coming off an ACL tear, and that's why he missed the first four games of the season. And unlike in other sports, he was allowed to compete in postseason play. In the MLB, they don't do that. You get popped for PEDs, for steroids, you're not eligible for the postseason roster. Edelman... Used performance Nancy drugs to come back from his ACL tear a little faster, got suspended, played in the Super Bowl, ended up being MVP. So you can debate as to whether or not the Patriots are cheaters, but they're definitely doing some cheaty things. Kat said yes. Why was he taking his clothes off? <laughs> <laughs> and she said his voice was off. Yeah, definitely. But that's funny. He was taking it off so all the ladies could have some excitement for the night. My favorite spot, we talked about this briefly on Today in AZ, was that Xbox commercial for, for the the, um, the kids with, yes. with disabilities, the, the kids that are playing with what I think they call like an adaptive controller, basically. Okay. Um, it's, it's like a new technology that you can program to fit your needs. Mm-hmm. So let's say you were born without a right arm. Like you could find a way to make that controller work for you. And so it's like a very inclusive, like, 
it was such a tearjerker. Like, mm. I, this is at the end. I think it was the fourth quarter they ran it. Okay. It's getting all choked up at an Xbox commercial. Aww. I'm like, where am I right now? Yeah. yeah. You're like, what? That was touching. I yeah. Like that, commercial. that was really well done, I thought. There was another one that I, I only saw the end of it, but it was T-Mobile. And it was like um, a conversation between a couple, a guy and a girl. And the girl was like, what should we have for dinner? And so he's going through a million things that he could text, right? He's like, why is this up to me? He's like, I don't know. <laughs> what do you want? And like, maybe, the, you know, am I going to pick the right answer? So he keeps going and going. And finally, he's like, oh, whatever you want, babe. <laughs> <laughs> like see Done. well yeah and then she comes back and then, so it's kind of funny just to see like all the things that guys would actually really want to type out and then they don't they just go with the safe answer <laughs> there's nothing better than when you're texting somebody on an iphone and you see the dots appear yes, and then they disappear yes. and then they reappear <laughs> that's you guys just waffling about how mean you want to be about something <laughs> no i shouldn't say that that's awful that was a good out. one i thought for sure all right guys any last comments you want to get in before we wrap the show up <sighs> mm -mm. No, not really. Let's do it again next Congrats year. Congrats on your Patriots winning. Thank you. Yeah. I, I, I know you're a big This Patriots is going to end, and then this is what we're going to have to hold on to for years yeah. when they go into a drought. It will happen. So well, don't worry, but, but how does it end? Like, how does the Patriots dynasty end? Is it the retirement of Brady? And he it's, said he's going to continue to play. Because Gronk, Gronk might be done this year. Supposedly, yeah, all yeah. the people that are in the know think Gronk is done. Eventually, something's going to give. Certain parts are going to go. Couldn't they do it without Brady? Couldn't uh, they do it without Belichick? So. Yeah, right? Yeah. So those two are the, the fathers something of the dynasty. Happens, some bad hit, something goes on, or maybe who knows what, what happens. Yeah. Could today and AZ operate without Jimmy Q? I don't know. Easy. The we don't want to know. Alive and well. Oh, you guys are good. We'll be you. back at 4.30 yes, tomorrow thank morning. You. The after show starts at 7.30 if you want to join the discussion again and uh, give us crap for talking about things that don't matter. Yeah. Have a you great matter Monday. To me, and I hope you have a great day. Yeah.